I've always been a collector. Uh, trains, stamps, coins, a um, little bit of everything. Right now, I discovered uh, uh, an old hobby of mine, painting. And uh, I'm experimenting in different types of uh, paints, uh, acrylics, watercolor, oils, and enjoying it. I was always uh, doing crafts when I was younger. And I used to imagine there was a um, door in our, uh, there was a wall in our bedroom. And I had two sisters, we shared uh, a loft, uh, a bedroom. But I, there was a wall that I would dream about that I would go in the wall and there was all crafts in there. I always enjoyed um, doing things that were creative. So I always would seek a job where I could use my creativity. We were born in Reading, moved to Sharon Hill, and went to Sharon Hill School till the seventh grade. Uh, then moved to Beverly, New Jersey. And uh, uh, two years in Beverly and went to Burlington High School. Second grade. Miss Kipp, I was her favorite. She really liked me. And, it was so cute. And, and I would, I would, uh, I would uh, clean her closets for her and dust them. And she put me up on a desk one time, gave me a marble that she found, and gave me a kiss. Oh, oh, oh. Second grade. <laughs> It went downhill from there because I had Miss Cromie the next year. She had a bun on the back of her head and she'd smack us around. I was always cleaning erasers for her. Oh, she was a mess. <laughs> but I remember that. I went to school in, well, I was born in Merchantville, New Jersey. Uh, and I also went to high school there. Uh, we lived for a time in Maple Shade, our family. Uh, and I grew up in Maple Shade a lot, but um, we also uh, we all spent a lot of time in Morristown, New Jersey, the next town over. We had a lot of friends there. Now I, I remember graduation. I had purple Bermuda shorts on, and somehow I ended up in the backyard of someone's house and sitting in a bird bath. I remember getting my beard shorts all wet. Uh, yeah, <laughs> that's my high school. Uh, but no, Carol said something about dancing. That was the big thing. Dances Wednesday night in Beverly, uh, Friday night in Riverside. Uh, the gang of guys would get together and get a six pack of beer and to get enough courage to get a, uh, ask the girls to dance. And uh, that was our big time, dances, yeah. It really wasn't destiny. I had a 1958 Dodge D500 convertible, white with a black top and red interior. And when I pulled up there, I saw the looks on their faces, and I had them. It, was, it wasn't me, it was my car. Do you know what? What? You really think that? <laughs> you really don't give yourself much credit. No, it was a car, yeah. <laughs> It was the car. We may not be together now. So. What? Maybe it wasn't the car. <laughs> Basic unit training, that's when you get involved with battalions and how battalions work and the companies work. Six months in, 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 at Fort Dix, if you had a three, four hours, I could tell you about some of the things that went on there like getting out of a pup tent in the winter with your mustache frozen, uh, getting in the, the tent with my tent buddy and finally buttoning up the tent and then having him come and rip the tent open because he had claustrophobia. Um, yeah, a lot of, lot of, I was, uh, I, I, I developed pretty well. I was a sergeant, I ended up at E7 uh, sergeant first class and uh, platoon sergeant of the weapons platoon and um, uh, 
back in those days in basic training, uh, anybody that had an attitude got it knocked off their shoulder. But there were some guys in there that just couldn't couldn't get with the program. And fortunately, I had a being small in nature, uh, I had some protection from my uh, sergeant, another sergeant, and uh, I'm, I. If I ever got in trouble, he was there to had my back. Uh, of course, it did cost me desserts. I, every mess time, I had to give him my dessert. But he was my protection, and I, I, I needed that. But there was so much, so many stories that I could tell you about basic training. I always have said that every man should go through basic training. I was, we were in our apartment above my dad's house, and I was getting ready to go to quartet practice. Uh, I had a barbershop quartet, and uh, I was sitting on the couch there and couldn't believe my eyes. There it was, and uh, uh, I was just glued to the TV. I, just as things evolved, it was unbelievable. Eventually, I did get over to the practice, but it wasn't much of a practice. We just were watching the, uh, the news of that. Uh, but I remember that distinctly. You were there with me. Yeah, we were both in the apartment together watching that. That, it was unbelievable. It was a sad day in our history. The thing I would like to, um, pass on to the younger generation is to trust in the Lord with all their heart and lean not to their own understanding. Because we were, we were created by Him to trust in Him with our life. And when you trust in Him with your life, He brings only good things to you. And you live a blessed life, and that's the best way you can live your life. That's the way you were meant to live your life. So I believe that everyone has a mission in their life. Um, and um, I have a mother who uh, was going to be a missionary. She went to Philadelphia College of the Bible, which is now uh, known as Philadelphia Biblical Institute. Uh, she married my dad back in the 30s and had a family and we became her mission and we were very fortunate. But I believe everyone has a mission in life. And um, when you discover what that is, that is your fulfillment. So I really didn't, um, discover my mission until I was older. Uh, actually, it's when I moved to where I live now, in the Zerberg Mansion. And we had a big home before, we had vacation homes, we had so many things, but then when we downsized and to an apartment and moved here, I realized, I said, why did, I was wondering, why did I come here to live? And then I realized that this was my mission. I really feel that living here, this is my mission. And um, it's to really, you know, share with the, the residents that live here and, you know, um, show them that you can be really happy in life and be joyful. And, and when they ask me why I'm so happy all the time and smiling, I say, it's because of the Lord. I says because he lives in me, and it, that brings joy to my life. Can't say any more than that. We've been, been very happy to be able to uh, uh, make this video. And uh, we'd like to give this to you, Karen and Paul, uh, along with our wishes for a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Uh, and a great life uh, for all of us together. 
Yes, we want to wish you a Merry Christmas and a wonderful New Year, healthy New Year, and say how blessed we are to have you.